Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, so we continue talking about Einstein's view uh, on the universe, if I can say so. Well, actually, it's about special theory of relativity. Now, um, we did discuss uh, things related to uh, time dilation. We presented Lorentz transformation and basically confirmed with the Lorentz transformation certain um, more, I would, sell, I, I would say, intuitive uh, calculations about time dilation. Uh, today we will talk about space, basically the lengths, as you know, the most important characteristic of a space, I guess, is the lengths. So how lengths behaves, how the view onto lengths is different if you are looking at the same thing from two different inertial uh, frames moving relative to each other. Now, this uh, lecture is part of the course called Relativity for All, presented on unizor.com. Uh, the website contains not only the lectures, but also uh, textual notes for each lecture, which basically is like, li like a textbook, synchronized lecture textbook, the chapter or whatever you call it. Um, also, the same website, unizor.com, contains prerequisite courses for this one which is mass for teens and uh, physics for teens. Um, the knowledge which is presented in those courses is definitely mandatory to understand relativity. So you, you, you can have it from some other sources. If you don't, you can use this website. The website is totally free. There are no uh, advertisement. I don't want anything to distract you from learning. Um, there are exams, if you wish. Uh, you can take them as many times as you want until you will get perfect score. Uh, also, the website contains certain functionality related to supervised study. So, let's say your parent or your supervisor or teacher wants to basically direct you as you are studying the material individually. So, you can just, he can make an assignment and you will just go with supervisory um, atten attention. Uh, signing in is not necessary if you're just doing everything by yourself, but if it's a supervised um, study, then yes, you do need the sign-in from a supervisor and from yourself to establish the connection, etc. Okay, so we're talking about length transformation. So, I did mention that um, we discussed already the time transformation and we used Lorentz equation for, for this. Um, I will use exactly the same kind of scenario. So you have two different inertial frames, the alpha frame and the beta frame. And there is an observer in alpha frame which is local to alpha and there is an observer in beta frame local to beta. Now, in um, this particular case we will use um, to analyze the length transformation we will use a rigid rod which is positioned uh, at rest in the beta system and the entire beta reference frame is moving relative to alpha uh, frame with a constant speed um, across the x-axis that's exactly the same as we considered before with time so, first of all, let me just remind you um, the uh, Lorentz transformation. Now, if you have alpha frame with uh, x, y, z, and time t um, coordinates, and you have beta frame with lowercase x, lowercase y, lowercase z, and lowercase t, and there is a transformation between um, the coordinates in this particular case considering the beta is moving with speed v only across the x-axis uh, of the alpha system the y and z coordinates are not changing uh, but the time and, uh, and the x-axis and x-coordinate they do change. So transformation from 
from alpha to beta looks like this uh, t is equal so that's the beta time uh, alpha time minus v divided by c square times x divided by square root of 1 minus v square and c square so that's how time is transformed we have derived this formula in Lorentz transformation lecture now the x again lowercase x the beta would be transformed as x minus v times t v is the speed t is the time uh, t is the time now obviously if beta is moving let's say to the right from uh, re relative to uh, to alpha system then you have to subtract that but Lorentz transformation adds this already familiar factor which is actually characteristic of relativity now y is equal to y and z is equal to z so these are not changing coordinates so let's just you know have this in mind now reverse transformation that's actually easy because if beta is moving relative to alpha with the speed v to the right then alpha is moving relative to the beta with the same speed v to the left which is minus v right so the basically you can use the same formula just change uh, uppercase and lowercase and minus to plus that's it so capital t would be equal to lowercase t plus v divided by c square times lowercase x and divided by the same square root and uh, capital X would be lowercase x plus v lowercase t divided by the same root and again capital Y is equal lowercase y and capital Z is equal lowercase z so these are Lorentz transformation from alpha to beta and this is from beta to alpha and there is only difference here is min minus here is plus minus plus and these are the same now we will use these Lorentz transformation in the same way we were using for time transformation uh, to, to basically demonstrate time dilation we will use to, for, for lengths to, to also demonstrate how length is changing so I have basically uh, two major cases one is I mean two major questions one is does the length is perceived differently in alpha system relative to the true length the proper length of this rigid rod which is located in beta system at rest in beta system and moving with the beta system relative to alpha so first of all is there a change now th the second question and we will answer positively the second question is does it depend on how this particular rod is located in the beta system you see the movement we have just decided it's stretching relative to the x-axis so my question is is a rod supposed to be like parallel to the x-axis perpendicular to the axis at the angle uh, 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 at, at axis etc how the change perceived change of the length of this rod depends on its position relative to the x-axis okay so we will consider two uh, kind of opposite cases one case would be when the rod is perpendicular to the x-axis which means trajectory and the rod are perpendicular to each other trajectory of the beta movement in the alpha system and the second would be the parallel what if the rod is positioned along the x-axis how in this case the length will be changed okay so we have two cases uh, case number one perpendicular now when the case uh, in this particular case the coordinates in the beta system of the rod would be from uh, 
the origin of coordinates which is 0, 0, 0 x, y and z <coughs> now the rod is at rest in the beta system which means it does not position does not depend on, on the time and it will stretch perpendicularly to x and I will choose uh, towards the z direction if you don't mind because it doesn't really matter so it's stretched from 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, r where r is the rod's length these are coordinates of the two edges two ends of the rod Okay. now I also assume that at time 0 for any system alpha and beta they completely coincide and then as the time increasing the beta is moving relatively to the alpha with the constant speed v preserving the parallelism of the axis right so it's just slowly moving uniformly with this with a constant speed v uh, let's consider it's to the right so the v is positive so it moves to the right um, along the x-axis of alpha okay <coughs> so these are coordinates in the beta system they are independent of time so for any for any time t for any times t I use this logical symbol for any so for any time t these are coordinates uh, of the road all right so let's just go and uh, apply the Lorentz transformation straightforward and see what 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 comes as coordinates in the alpha system okay all right so we will use these are from beta to alpha and what do we see t is equal to so that's called t0 that's this point in beta it will coordinates which one time t for any time t basically right plus v over c squared times x coordinate which is zero divided by square root of one minus v square c square okay now x zero this is coordinate of the bottom of the rod but in alpha system right so that's x which is 0 plus v times t divided by square root of 1 minus v square c square okay y would be equal to y which is 0 and z would be equal to z which is 0 so these are coordinates of this point now how about coordinates of the other end of the rod all right so the t would be t plus v divided by c square and this is x x is still zero so it's still zero here uh, this is r t r that's the second the, the the opposite end of the road x r is equal to uh, again x which is 0 plus v t divided by square root of 1 minus v square c square oh I didn't mention it but c is obviously speed of light I'm, I'm sure you know about this okay y r is equal to lowercase y which is 0 and z r which is equal to lowercase z which is r so let's talk geometry the beginning and the end x coordinate is the same as you see y coordinate is the same and z coordinate is from 0 to r so in the alpha system what is the length of the road well basically it's z which is length is equal to r now what it means is that if the rod is perpendicular okay if this is x and this is z and the rod is perpendicular and the beta system 
lowercase z, lowercase x. It moves here. Alpha observer is here in the alpha frame in the very at, at the origin. So no matter what happens as long as this uh, rod goes uh, along the x-axis but its, it, its length is perpendicular it does not change basically. Okay. Second case is perpendicular uh, and I mean parallel. So let's consider the parallel case. Parallel case is much more complex, I would say. So first of all, we have to explain how exactly we can measure the lengths in the parallel case. So let's consider you have one uh, frame, which is capital X, capital Z. Doesn't really matter, actually. And the, um, the rod is horizontally across uh, along the x-axis and it's the same lowercase z and this is the beginning of time when both alpha and beta systems coincide so what I would do is the following my alpha observer is in the origin I suggest the following method let's just put this rod here in the beta system from minus r to zero. That's beta coordinates. And then the beta will move. And I will consider two events. Event number one is the beginning of time when t is equal to t is equal to zero and x, y, z equals to lowercase equals to y equals to z equals to zero. So this is the point. I observe my beginning, my, my right end of the, of the rod at this particular time and I know it has these coordinates in all the systems. Okay? Now, now the beta system is moving now with the speed v and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm watching the left end of the rod. As soon as the left end of the rod passes my alpha observer, which is in the sitting in the origin of the alpha system, that's the second event. So I will have two events. Each event has certain coordinates and timing, and I would like actually to compare the timing. Now, whenever I have the time between these two events, if I will multiply it by the speed of the movement of the B, that would give me the lengths perceived by alpha observer, right? So this edge of the rod is moving with the speed v towards alpha. So all I know is, I, I would like to know, is the timing it takes for this edge to reach uh, origin of the alpha as the beta is moving to the right, okay? So these are two events, and the first event is obvious. It's all zeros. Time equals zero, all coordinates equals zero, so that's quite obvious. So let's just think about the second thing. So, what is the time from the beta perspective for this point to reach this point? Well, in the beta system, all it needs is with the speed v to cover the distance r. That's it, because the, uh, the rod is at rest, so as long, as long as we will move the whole beta system to the right by r, my left edge would be at alpha origin. So the timing from the beginning to this particular point reaching my original in the beta system, this tr is equal to r divided by v. That's the timing. Okay, that's what, that, that's what we know. All right. Now, what are coordinates of this point in the beta system? Well, the rod is at 
rest in the beta system. It used to be on the distance r to the left from the beginning. When it moves, it's still in the same position. It's still on the distance r from the beginning of the from the origin of the beta system, which means lowercase x r is still uh, minus r. As it used to be minus r, it remains uh, minus r. So whenever this point will reach alpha origin, its coordinate in the beta system would still be minus r. Nothing's changed, right? OK. I think that's basically sufficient to find tr. So what's the perceived time during which this point will reach my 0? I know the beta time and beta x coordinate. Now I will just use uh, Lor uh, Lorentz transformation and I will get tr which is r over v plus vc square times x and x is minus r divided by square root of 1 minus v square c square. And what is it? Uh, let's do r over v outside. Uh, that would be v square. This would be 1. So it will be 1 minus v square c square divided by square root of minus v square c square equals rv square root 1 minus v square c square. Okay. Now, if I will multiply this perceived time it takes for this h to reach the alpha's origin, multiplied by the speed uh, which, which the whole thing is moving, times v, so the length, perceived length, would be equal to r times square root of 1 minus v squared minus c squared. Now, this is less than 1, as you understand, because all the speeds are less than speed of light. So the lengths, perceived lengths, would be less than the proper lengths of the uh, rod in, this, uh, in, in the system where it, it is at rest, which means in, in the beta system. Well, obviously you know this abbreviation. So we'll have L is equal to R divided by gamma. Gamma is greater than 1. This is less than 1. It's reverse, and this is greater than 1. So we are dividing by something, so this is less. So the verdict is the proper length is always greater than the perceived length. Proper length is the length where uh, uh, this rod is at rest. And perceived length is how we view. So if I am an alpha observer, and my and the road is just moving across and it, it has the length of uh, r i see it in my perception is as smaller and the faster the road the, the road goes to the right the um, the smaller i will see it i will perceive this length as smaller because this, uh, but obviously it should be v should be closer to 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 to, to c to get this r is really kind of significantly less than original than than the proper lengths. So, well, that's what it is. This is the formula of contraction of the proper lengths if you observe it from some kind of a point and the segment or a rod whatever which is moving and stretched parallel to the trajectory we are talking about you see it's a parallel case when the rod is parallel to the trajectory of the beta only then you will see this kind of um, contraction okay that's it i suggest you to read the notes for this lecture uh, so you have to go to uh, relativity for all um, then the next menu item is Einstein view, and then you will find Lang's transformation lecture. So read the text, uh, read the notes. There are a couple of pictures there. 
and uh, I think it might actually provide a little bit better understanding. Um, my purpose was to explain it in um, a relatively rigorous way um, through much less of the intuition but more towards just calculation based on Lorentz transformation which we have proven before in the, one of the previous lectures. That's it, thank you very much and good luck.